Breathing is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Humans have the ability to override automatic respiration. Ultimately, the control of breathing is about supply and demand of oxygen. Oxygen is necessary for life and is used to create energy in cellular respiration. Let's learn more about breathing and cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is required for life and breathing, which is how higher animals absorb oxygen. When you take a breath, you inhale atmospheric air rich in oxygen, or O2, and exhale air enriched with carbon dioxide, or CO2. Some primitive animals, such as worms, don't breathe like we do. They absorb oxygen directly across their outer surface. But in both humans and lowly worms, oxygen is absorbed into body tissues and CO2 is released. This process is called a gaseous exchange. During gaseous exchange, oxygen and carbon dioxide are transferred in opposite directions across a specialized respiratory surface. Animals have different mechanisms to allow gas exchange across respiratory surfaces. Insects, for example, have tiny holes called spiracles along the abdomen. Each spiracle leads to a trachea, a tube-like structure. The tracheal system permeates the body of the insect. Each tracheal tube delivers air directly to the insect's tissues and removes carbon dioxide waste. Many animals, such as mollusks and fish, breathe through gills. Gills are tissues that present a large surface area for exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide. In fish, water passes over fine thread-like filaments, where gas exchange takes place. Most aquatic mollusks breathe with a gill structure called the tinidium, located in the mantle cavity. This comb-like gill is covered with fine hair-like structures called cilia. The motion of the cilia draws water over the gill surface where oxygen is absorbed. Humans breathe with lungs in a constant cycle of inhalation and exhalation. During inhalation, the intercostal muscles, located between each of the ribs, work together with the diaphragm to expand the size of the chest. The diaphragm contracts and moves downward, while the intercostal muscles pull the rib cage upward and outward, expanding the size of the chest cavity. The increase in chest volume decreases internal pressure, so the lungs then expand. Air is sucked through the nose and mouth as the lungs expand. The air travels down the throat and into the windpipe, or trachea. The air follows the trachea as it divides into air passages called bronchial tubes. The bronchial tubes divide into smaller air passages called bronchioles. The bronchioles end in tiny balloon-like sacs called alveoli. Your lungs have over 300 million alveoli. A web of tiny blood vessels called capillaries envelop each alveolus. Here is where gas exchange occurs. Oxygen from the inhaled air passes through the thin adjacent walls of the alveoli and capillaries, diffusing into deoxygenated blood from the heart. At the same time, carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses into the alveolus from where it is exhaled. Once oxygen passes through the thin wall of the alveoli into the blood, it travels to the cells. Oxygen is the fuel needed by cellular respiration. All living cells use cellular respiration to break organic molecules to provide energy. Cellular respiration can occur with or without oxygen, but it's much more efficient with oxygen. Cells break down the sugar glucose and store its energy in molecules of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. Cellular respiration transfers chemical potential energy from glucose into ATP. ATP is used by cells to power nearly all of their activities to grow, divide, replace worn-out cell parts, and for many other tasks. In eukaryotes, this metabolic process takes place within the mitochondria of the cell. When you exercise, your breathing rate increases, because during exercise, our muscles are required to do more work, which requires more ATP. More demand for ATP requires more cellular respiration. This increase in cellular respiration in turn leads to more oxygen consumption and more production of carbon dioxide. To meet the demand, our breathing rate increases to draw more oxygen in and to let more CO2 out.